Dragon week, not this one. Just had him tanned, it's a failed dragon. Today we're covering dark and light dragon skin. Uh, we've chosen red here, but you can apply these methods to any color you like. Concentrate on the methodology. Of course, we're listing the paints we use, but we've given you a dark and a light equivalent with pretty much the same paints, interestingly. And with that, you should be armed with the kind of knowledge you need to paint any dragon, any color, with dry brushing to a pretty, uh, it's pretty fast, but mostly the quality is high. Like this is really good for large textured surfaces, which quite a lot of people are intimidated by. So scales, thick skin, anything gribbly basically, maybe even fur, this would be absolutely perfect for. Any questions about colors, if you can't work out how to apply it to green or whatever, give us some reference and some information, let us know below and we will sort you out. As ever, the best suggestion will receive a texture palette of your choosing and a brush set of your choosing. So try and keep it dragony related. Why not, we're on Dragon Week. We've got Ionos coming up in the future, that model is nuts. But for now, let's jump in and I'll do a load more info on dragons and upcoming exciting stuff in the outro. See you then. All right, let's go. So while we're here, something spooky is around the corner. We do have Halloween sets uh, going up for sale on the site. This has turned out particularly well. Pretty cool little spooky sprue design in there. A couple of stickers. Of course, this will be available in SM or D in the five brush variants. And got a big little palette to go with it texture palette but obviously can be used as a normal palette as well as you're about to see me doing with mine. Let's go. So this is going to be a pretty fast one and we're going to try our best to not explode our paint on our palette. See how that goes. No explosions. Good beginning. We'll try our best to keep it pretty quick. This is for um, decent quality at incredible speed we're going for here. So we're trying to blur that line between, oh dear, Citadel pots. Are you kidding? every time. Good start. Contamination police are already having a party. I'll hold off the Wild Rider in case we end up not deciding to use that. Otherwise, got everything we need, let's go. I'll also be trying, as I said, we're using speed to use an extra large. We do have a large or medium available though, if we need. I'd recommend working from reference here if you are trying to copy Ionos exactly have him up and you can make some adjustments to the scheme. The one thing that I'd say is quite important about his paint job actually is he goes really aggressively from black to red with very little intermediate stages on his scales, the big scales on his back. The rest of it's a bit more subtle and there's a few more steps, but you can really, really be pretty uh, kind of ballsy with your trans uh, transitions from a very, very dark red to a pretty much pure red on the scales. We've had quite a few questions recently, what everything is. I should probably say this in video, but this is our texture palette. This is where I'm gonna test our colors. It's where I'm gonna clean my brush. It's a really important part of how we work. And this is our dampening pad, which comes in the set in the little hole there. This is gonna introduce a little bit of moisture to the painting process. We don't want a brush wet, but we don't want it dry either. I know it's called dry brushing, but it's too late to change the now. We're using dry brushes, but we're gonna achieve a pretty tasty result. So. As with everything, uh, we're going to start off base coating and for us, we'll try and use the same brush all the way through if possible. So I'm going to take as little as possible of the paint off to the side, between that black and that blue, keeping my brush vertical and not scooping it like a spoon, pull in some of the red. What we should get here is because we're using strong colours, we should basically get one coat coverage. That is an extremely nice red there. A little bit of blue in it has really added like an extra aspect to it. And then rather than going back for more paint, I'll go back for more water to help the paint that's still on the brush leave more easily. It's so made a really cool kind of, I don't know, deep, deep burnt red, deep burgundy. Looks very sweet anyway. Give it a second coat. Now with this second coat, I'm actually gonna kind of concentrate on the areas that I think I'm likely to have missed with the first one. Generally speaking, that's the same for everyone with your airbrushing or dry brushing or layering your base coat, people miss the edges. So I'm gonna hit the edges on purpose. The reason for that is just to give them a little additional layer of protection because you are gonna be drying brush, uh, dry brushing pretty aggressively. Quite a physical dry brusher. I didn't break that, that came broken in the kit, sadly. All right, should be us good to go. And it's pretty much dry already. Right, step one. I've got some paper next to me, so I'll be able to show you how much paint there is on the brush. It's a little bit, but not a lot. That's fine, I'm not worried about that contaminating. Um, the Viston Red is very strong. It's also got quite a high portion of black in it anyway, so we'll be playing 
uh, kind of to that and using it to our advantage. But also, we haven't cleaned the brush 100%, so the little bit of black that we had in there before is going to stay. Quite a lot of paint on the tip should be coming off relatively easily. So what we're going to do here is basically it's a heavy overbrush. So everywhere it's getting the same buffy treatment and the areas that stick out the most are going to get hit the most. I'm doing it in a circular motion. So we're going to hit everything from every angle. We're not trying to suggest particular lighting or anything like that. And what this will do is it will make sure that areas like here that isn't, you know, wing membrane, that gets highlighted nicely and naturally too. Patience, we're going pretty fast here. There is no need to speed it up. If you do have details that run with a certain aspect, hopefully you can see that. We've got these ridges that run here. If you want to hit that more noticeably, you can do that. Because we've circled, we've kind of done that a bit anyway, but if you want to hit particular wrinkles, just go across them, not down them. More water from the dampening pad. It's going to help the existing paint leave. Again, we're literally cleaning our brush here. We just happen to be cleaning it onto the model. Whether I clean it onto my palette or the model, does not matter. Take some more red. Again, we're not scooping it. It's not a spoon, it's a brush. And ideally, we're putting the paint on not to work it into the brush, but we're working it onto the end of the brush so it can leave quite easily. Start again, light pressure at first. Might find on some smoother areas you knock it off a bit. What you can do there is dip or gently and then just leave it for a little bit. That will dry a layer on there. Okay, so got a nice foundation. What I'm going to do at this point is I am going to clean my brush a little bit more thoroughly, top up my water, and see how much paint comes off the brush. A little bit, but not too much. Kind of comparable to how we were before, a little bit lighter. It's going to start with what should be pure Mephiston now. We're going to involve a little bit of the Evil Suns. Now at this point, what I want to do is be a lot more careful with how easily the paint's going to leave the brush. I've got all the texture on my texture pad, so I'm going to pretend my texture pad is my model using light pressure here. And as you can see, it's just kind of hitting the edges of the crackle details. That's about enough. Got to work quite hard to make it smear. So now we can confidently go to the model. You're always better off with too little rather than too much. You cannot reverse too much. You cannot add to too little. Okay, looking pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're preparing to jump really aggressively to our last step, but before we do that, this is actually the stage when I'd incorporate a wash. Get a nice big chunky brush. I've got a size four here. Whatever you're using, shake it thoroughly. We want good behavior out of the wash that we're picking. Take null oil. Null oil is extremely weak these days. It's a very forgiving one. I'm going to make sure that the wing is fully dry. So we've left a little bit of time. Dry brushing dries quite quick anyway. If you do hair dryer it, let it cool because if your surface is hot, that's really going to kind of adversely affect the quality of the wash that you put down. I'm going to get ready with some medium, just in case. Don't know if we need it yet, but a little dot there just in case. Okay, so you can do it all over or you can concentrate in the recesses. I'm at least going to start in the recesses and then we'll kind of assess how it looks there. And I'm going to keep my wing flat or at one orientation. I don't want stuff running downwards. I don't want stuff running upwards. I just want it to sit on top. You could do it flat on your palette if you wanted. Whatever you feel gives you the most control. So we're going to be rewarded here for working as fast as possible. Rather than letting it kind of pull and well, I'm going to use anywhere that it looks like I've got excess on the model just to mop it up. And especially with the black, that's very easy to see. If you blow it gently, you can kind of accelerate the process of it pulling but I wouldn't use a hairdryer or anything like that. Okay, so take a good look at the model and kind of assess the areas where you think you've got a lot. If you want to make it lighter anywhere, water on your brush. And you can just kind of smudge around that area. 
I think I'm good as far as making it lighter goes there. I just want to pull out any slightly excessive pulling. I think that's about good. Let it dry fully. Okay, so without 100% dried, apart from maybe this section here that I think is dry enough that we don't have to worry about it, basically you just lift, pick up where we lifted off. So we were on our Mephiston and Evil Suns mix. So basically, smearing, you don't want to be able to get unless you really, really push for it. So that's about right. I always check on the back of my thumb. Just picking out the wrinkles of my skin, we're all good. Now, after that black wash, this red should really jump out. Again, patience. It's not about making an immediate difference, just keep going, keep going. If you rush this, you'll end up pushing into the cracks that we just washed that non oil into, but we want to retain those. So, no sprint finishes. And it's often useful to turn stuff upside down or the other way around because. I'll develop some kind of unconscious habits while I'm going through, and I'll pick on certain areas for whatever reason. Turning it around the other way often counts as that. Take some water to help what we've got leave. Keeps it soft too, keeps the brushes pretty. And I think we've definitely got room to uh, push towards a little bit of an orangey red here. Make sure that I've not missed anywhere first. This is very important to lay a foundation under such a big aggressive jump up towards a bright orangey red. Use the red pure first. Again, it's not leaving too easily. Areas like this look particularly good. Kind of getting darker in the recesses and in the wrinkles. Okay. Maybe I want to use an actual orange. Have a quick play here, color-wise. Yeah, I think it's, it's a bit kind of peachy, isn't it? Could use Fire Dragon Bright, but I think I'll go with Troll Slayer. Give ourselves the option. Yeah, I think I'm going for the orange rather than for the slightly peachy Wild Rider Red. And it colourful. Feels a bit more fiery to me. Appropriate. There we go. Cool. Okay. Softer pressure. Look how nicely these scales are painted. There you go. That looks great. Really leathery and realistic. Give the brush a bit of a wash, and then we're going to go for adding some orange to it. It'll still have some of our previous color in the bristles. So this isn't by any means a pure orange, but we have only taken the orange. Hit the edges, hit the wrinkles. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna do a final all but clean, and then we're gonna establish the brightest highlights, and we are done. Super soft. Only when we're a hundred percent comfortable and confident with the behavior of the brush do we go yellow. Brilliant. Kind of dark reddy orange, very, very dragon appropriate. Final note, if you want to increase the shadows anywhere, you can just pop the wash in again. How I do it, I'll show you quickly. Let's say we wanted to increase our shadows in this section. 
pop nail the oil in here, wash our brush quickly, and before it's dried, we'll just fuzz it out. This is just water. Like that. When it's dry, when it's dry, it'll have increased the contrast. It looks great, really good. Uh, using a blue for that is fine. Um, really, really nice way to do it. And of course, you can selectively do it around wrinkles and things as well, just to kind of up that contrast. Really easy, really forgiving. Wet blending's not scary, especially with washes. Okay, so we've covered a dark red. What if we want it really warm? The normal place to start with that is just by starting with a lighter base, maybe even a white base. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm normally pretty careful with whites because they tend to be super matte. So we're gonna try and kind of counter that. And one of the ways is to hand paint whatever we put over the white, which is probably gonna be my fist on red over it. But uh, yeah, let's go and turn this ring white and see how much of a difference it makes. It doesn't have to literally be white, by the way. It could be anything really light, whatever that is. You know, it could be a base paint. It could be a couple layers or something like that. You could airbrush something on. We're going to be putting a layer over it. So just get this wing light by any means possible. Our means is going to be just to use a solid white. This is for layers. You could use anyone's though. AK is pretty good. Monument is extremely good. Any of those kind of go-tos all of which I have around my table, actually. I'll show you this one because it is nuts. Ew. Tell you what, I've not used bold titanium for a while. Let's show you what it's good at. Same brush as before. Utterly crazy. What color. All right, so obviously if you're using a spray can or something like that, you will get a better result than that. But that is a much lighter wing, pretty fast. So strong. Anyway, we have our base coat. Let's make that really red. My fist on. Evil Suns. I'm gonna see if we can use like literally exactly the same paints and how that goes. So uh, this should be interesting. Okay, base coat. Take a little bit of both. Mostly my fist on. We're just going for absolutely flat, crazy bright red. Turning a bit pastely because of the white we've got in the brush, but I'm going to do two coats anyway. As predicted, strong paint is strong. There we go. Okay, so there we have flat kind of like red period red. What on earth are we gonna do given where that started? Obviously this is gonna end up brighter. I'm quickly gonna kind of smudge some darker shading into the recesses here. You can do it with the wash like you did the last one. I'm actually going to use a medium for this. And our hold your blue should still be workable because it's very satiny. Grab a little bit of our black too. You can go as dark as you want. Now, the darker you are in the recesses, the brighter your stuff is going to look in comparison with really high contrast that's next to it. So it's not like making your thing darker is going to make it look darker. It's going to make sections of it look darker. It'll make other sections of it look lighter. So we're hoping that is how it works out here. You can kind of uh, try and be a bit subtle and stipple and fade your black away. It's up to you. I'm just trying to push it right into the recesses. And then we're going to re-establish our red over the top of that. So. I don't feel the need to be hugely careful with it. Let's see how that turns out. Give us a good clean. Go back to our mix. But now we're not base-cutting anymore, so not quite as yellow as we were. 
this will probably take a few coats. You'll get a very different red going over a black. You can probably see that already. Look at this. We, it didn't matter that we weren't subtle because we're dry brushing, so we're getting some kind of interesting use of the texture that's there anyway. Things should turn out absolutely fine. Cool, pretty good actually, considering how yellow that was. Pure evil suns. Nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reuse the principle from earlier after cleaning our brush a little bit more by introducing white. Now we've got to be quite careful with this step. So we were yellow. We can uh, we can slow down now. We've made quite a lot of progress quite fast anyway. What we're looking to do here is provide another layer of kind of underpainting. We really want this to only be picking out the details. Be quite careful with it. So you can see what's happening. The white, which is way lighter than anything we've used so far, is picking out the raised areas. That's fine. We're going to carefully put it there, and then we're going to cover all of this with red. And hopefully, it's do exactly what it did in our first stages. You can do as much of this as you want and go as strong as you want. The theory is it's not going in the recesses, it's only going on areas that stick out. So as long as you're careful with where it gets to, you should not have any issues because you're going to cover over all of this by definition anyway. Final white step. Soft pressure here, being really careful. Not looking bad just on its own, but it is a little bit pinky. So what are we going to do about that? We want no white left in here. The joys of the strength of Mephiston Red. To be fair, we've used just everything we've used has been strong apart from um, Evil Suns. I'm basically cleaning until the point where my bristles feel nice and soft. Don't want them feeling dry with caked on paint. And um, hopefully they just stop exiting. Might look aggressive, but as long as you don't push your brush into things kind of this way, they can take a lot of abuse. So, Evil Suns has got to do some work for us, and we're going to be pretty careful with this application. You can always put a wash on afterwards. <laughs> Ideally, we won't be wanting to do anything for, you know, like mistake fixing reasons. And we're just going to kind of smudge it over. This might take a few goes. Patience is a virtue here for sure. You can always go heavier later. If you're an airbrusher, you could put the previous step down and then kind of uh, airbrush and glaze over this or airbrush some contrast over this. That would look great. Okay, first layer is down. Pink has been counted a little. I think we can probably be a bit heavier with it. A little, not a lot. There we go. Nice. Really bright and really dark. This one's going to look so, so, so dark in comparison. So we've literally used the same colors. We didn't wash this one, but we used blue like a wash. And that's the difference you can get from starting from light and starting from dark. Oops. Oh dear. Any paint knows what I did there. So that's the difference you can get going from dark and going from light. The same colors apart from using orange in the final step. To be fair, I may as well use I, uh, I use an orange in the final step, carefully. I think this looks great, but just kind of prove a point, really. I want to be using as close as possible to exactly the same colors in the same sequence, roughly. Very, very light. That's great, actually. These wings are a little bit older. The, um, the new Drake's got more obvious texture on his, so if anything, that just makes it way easier on INS. Lovely. Might go and do a little quick selective wash in the recesses. This one's just to push it even further. So I've got less and less on the brush. 
be more and more YOLO with how we use it. This is a four, by the way. It's my very old, very tired, extremely heavily trafficked wash brush. Badass. Which is your favorite? Obviously this one's kind of more striking. I feel like this one's more realistic though. And with a shiny rider, the shiny rider would be getting all the attention. So uh, yeah, let me know your favorite. Maybe a middle ground between the two. It's often the best answer, right? I decided I'm not quite satisfied with they're very, very low profile wrinkles. Like I said, the new one's got really awesome texture. Uh, Ian, if you could pop up any picture of any part of that model's uh, skin, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, as you can see, probably on or at the side of the screen now, that is a kind of riot of perfect texture. These ones were a little bit kind of too subtle in terms of how much the scale stuck out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give all of it a careful backwash. So it's been diluted with water, it's just not an oil again. We're not looking for thick pooling anywhere. This is almost a glaze. It's just a slight pooling that we're getting in those creases to make sure we've made the most of them a little. Anything is more than none, basically. So even though they're relatively hard to make the most of, we're gonna try. You could do this with a purple or anything. All right, so that should make a little bit of a difference. Quite hard work though, this stuff. You're fighting with the model a little bit. They're just so low profile, these wrinkles. So um, full honesty here, pretty much thought that I had finished the video, but these guys aren't photographing very well. Part of that is my issues photographing red. But um, part of it I think might be a little bit for lack of contrast. So I'm gonna show you some more post washes um, for two reasons. These are, I think actually like <laughs> on video, fine. Gaming table's absolutely solid, but I'm gonna show you some post washing to reduce a little bit of chalkiness. If you've got it here, uh, that's lighter towards white, so cameras might pick that out more in photos than it appears in real life. And then also there's something we've touched on, but the pretty low profile texture on these wings is making the center sections look flat. They probably look smoother in real life, um, but yeah, not on a gaming table, not in context, I think on their own. They're not looking quite hard like so what we're going to do is we're quickly going to remedy them with a couple of steps with post washes you can do this as much or as little as you like there's always something to be gained from kind of looking at your stuff and um maybe they are a little bit lacking in contrast in the middle i think it looks okay it makes it look semi-transparent but let's see what we can do to fix it okay so one of the most obvious options would be to just take a one color fix caribou crimson would be a great example of that dilute it a bit with water or medium slap it all down uh, all over and it will kind of keep things ready. It might even push them more towards a classic red. That's a solid option. You've got some really strong contrast that you could use as a glaze. Um, but what we need to do is we need to be able to put a little bit of surplus on in order to be able to pull in the recesses. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something very strong like Sigwald Burgundy and I'm going to drop it in with Nelnoil oil and I'm going to carefully use that dilated. Adopt. This stuff's nuts. We've got Doomfire Magenta or other stuff like that as well. So there's plenty of options of really strong ones that you can basically use kind of like inks. There we go, <laughs> a tiny bit, tiny bit too much. Let's use a little bit of crimson to kind of dilute it and space it out. Okay, take some water. That's looking about right. Now I want a mix that we can leave on there a little bit more heavily than you would do normally because we're going to need to be able to direct it into these cracks to make them jump out a little bit more. So. Let's give that a go now. That should be about right. I think we're good. I'm ready to act pretty fast with water. If needs be. Obviously, if you're on one of the uh, newer sculpts, this type of thing is less of an issue, but if you're on 3D prints or older GW stuff, these details don't tend to be quite as nicely realized. Have to be careful for the pooling in all the same points that we've been conscious of before. Basically here, especially if you're holding it that way, it's going to be in these little Vs in the middle. So make sure I've mopped it up from there. And details like this, this is where it's going to look flat. You've got these creases here. So I'm going to carefully manually kind of dot it on around that area. Now, because this is thin and it's a color that's not kind of pushing the paint scheme around too much, 
You can do this multiple times and hopefully that should help you achieve the desired effect. It will also counter any chalky dry brushing that you've got going on. Okay, to be fair, hopefully uh, that retains some of the kind of depth that it's got whilst the wash is still drying. It's going to lose some, you have to accept that, but um, that actually is an improvement. So I'm kind of pleased with that and it's looking more and more realistic, kind of like a real animal or a lizard or something. So <sighs> thank you camera, I guess. All right, we're good. So hopefully that's helped you with the kind of intimidating prospect of large dragony features. You don't need to worry about it. Couple of small notes. You can go between dark to light wherever you like, and you can jump up quite aggressively as long as you take a few steps on the way. So don't go from like deep dark blue red all the way up to, you know, like with some blue added, not blue red, literally, all the way up to like a super bright pastel, um, lots of yellow involved red without some intermediate steps. The more steps you put in, they don't necessarily need to add a lot of time, but they'll make the other stuff land more easily. Also, if you want to have like a crisp, noticeable result where you're really picking out the scales, you'll find that easier with slightly matte paints or pastel paints that involve a little bit more white. Some colors are good for this, some colors are bad. Pastely purple, foreshadowing to Inos, we didn't go, did not go on canon with him one bit. That works really well. Yellow will work really well, orange will work really well. A deep red, it's kind of hard to go up to very, very light white towards the end, unless you're doing individual edge highlighting, and that'll take you about 20 years if you're not a member of the heavy metal team. I wouldn't recommend it if you want to paint any other models in that time frame, although I will quite happily sit here and drool over the paint job on Inos. I think it's one of the best ones I've done in recent times. Top to bottom, just flawless, brilliant, absolutely love it, especially the metals. Anyway, getting off track, fanboying, but the recent releases have been great. We've got some upcoming stuff that's pretty interesting in terms of prototypes and new products being announced soon. Obviously, I show you the Halloween set. Keep your eyes peeled for some other stuff dropping. I might be testing it out on the channel. Break them, probably. It's my job, luckily. And uh, very, very soon they might be appearing on our website. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Put your comments below, put your questions about particular color schemes below, or your suggestions on the best dragon-related tutorial below and the best one of those will select and you'll get a texture palette of your choosing and a brush set of your choosing. It can be any brush set. There might be some cool ones coming up. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. We'll catch you in the next video, which should be quite soon. Appreciate your patience after the long break. We have been out of the country quite a lot, but it was lovely to get to see everyone in Germany and also a few of you at Scale Miniature Challenge in the Netherlands. Catch you soon.